I don't care who you are. Life is going to knock you down. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope and you got to do me a favor. Like you can't give up. You can't give in. Pain is temporary. Pain is your friend. Pain is going to take you to the next level. When you going through pain, I know what you feel it. I know exactly because I've been there. I've done that. But you got to work through it. And the reason why both of you are not successful is because every single time stuff not going your way, you give up, you quit, you let go. And people feel weakness. They feel it. You can feel when somebody's not committed. When they're not all in, when they're not dedicated. And there's another level you get to when you go all in. Winners win and losers lose. There are going to be times that you're going to be wondering, why should I keep showing up and working my business? Why should I keep at it? Why should I keep showing up to the conventions? Why should I keep picking up the phones and making the phone calls? Why should I keep fighting for my goals and fighting for my dreams? And what I want to remind you is that you got to show up for your life regardless of the circumstances. You got to show up in spite of the naysayers. You got to show up in spite of the conversation going on in your mind. You got to show up for your life because if you don't, nobody else will. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. You must have the faith to call forth those things that do not as though they were. You've got to decide, I deserve this and I'm going to have it. You've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes, I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. Yes, yes. I don't care about the fact I'm in a hole now. Doesn't matter about where I am. The last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely. I'm still in the process of transforming my life. I'm still in the process of becoming. Yes. The brilliance of Thomas Edison was not in his mind. It was something much more ordinary and often much less respected. I've got no imagination, he once said. I never dream. I've created nothing. If you're someone who doesn't like Edison, you might think that this is Edison admitting to stealing his inventions from other, more brilliant inventors like Nikola Tesla. Not quite, but he did readily concede that most of the credit belonged to something other than his brain. The genius hangs around his laboratory day and night, Edison said. If anything happens, he's there to catch it. If he wasn't, it might happen just the same. Only it would never be his. What he's talking about is showing up. The incredible underrated power of clocking in every day, putting your ass in the seat. And the luck this seems to inevitably produce. Edison lived in his laboratory and never missed a day. Like Gehrig, even when he was sick, when he was tired or when visited by tragedy or disaster. The modern conveniences we can trace to his lab then owe far more to his body than his brain, to the compounding power of consistency rather than sheer brilliance. It wasn't about inspiration. It was about getting to work, show up and try, get on the treadmill, pick up the violin, script out some scenes, reach out to some clients, read some reports, lift a couple weights, jog one mile, cross one thing off the two do list, chase down a lead. It doesn't matter what it is. All aspects of our life benefit from this circumscribed kind of Just as long as you do something every day, that is the important thing to show up. When you're tired, when you don't have to, even if you have an excuse, even if you're busy, even if you won't get recognized for it, even if it's been kicking your ass lately, once something is done, you can build on it. Once you get started, momentum can grow. When you show up, you can get lucky. Is this still hard? Yes. But the good news is that because it's hard, most people don't do it. They don't show up. They can't even do one tiny thing a day. 
So, yes, you're alone out there on the track in the rain. You're the only one responding on Christmas. But having the lead is, by definition, a little lonely. This is also why it's quiet in the morning. You have the opportunities all to yourself. Don't worry about setting any records. Just report for duty. No excuses. And here's the irony. This is also a way to break records. Consistency is a superpower. Day to day, willpower is incredibly rare. Lowell Gettrick was a solid position player and a good hitter. But his success really was rooted in the fact that he didn't miss many days of work. It's quite likely that had he continued at his normal pace and not been stricken with owls that he would have put up career numbers that surpassed Babe Ruth, Gershwig wasn't just able to show up despite injuries and fatigue. He also had to push through ennui, doubt and just plain not feeling it. He had slumps like we all do, but he also understood what they meant. As a minor leaguer, he had struggled at the plate and thought about quitting. The Yankees' owner sent down a scout to walk Eric through the very basic math of a batting average. A good hitter hits 300, and hitting 350 is terrific. Hitting 400 is almost unheard of. What does that translate to? Missing on six tries out of 10. A hitter can also go days, weeks, without touching the ball. That's what the scout told him. The most important thing a young ball player can learn is that he can't be good every day. You don't have to always be amazing. You do always have to show up. What matters is sticking around for the next at bat. The ability to do that, coupled with the ability to endure what John Steinbeck called dawdly days while writing East of Eden. Those days when everything seems out of whack, when you're just not feeling it, when the distractions won't stop. It's the first step to greatness, literally. You cannot be great without the self-discipline to do that. One thing a day adds up. Each day adds up. But the numbers are only interesting if they accumulate in large quantities. You guys that are just getting started, you're not going to start right here. You're going to start down there. Probably in another city, another town. I grew up in Lake Charles, Louisiana. No money. Raised by a single mother. I was in debt at 25 years old. First thing that I had to do in my life was not learn a new skill. First thing I had to do to get my life moving in the right direction was self-development. It is vital, it was vital for me that I improved myself and I could start depending upon me. I had to show up every day with some rituals, some disciplines, and start getting myself to trust me. Not trust others, but trust myself to do the right thing every day. One of the things that I started doing was beating the sun up every morning. I'm gonna beat that sun up every morning so that I had the discipline and the control of, over my life. So I knew, hey, before that thing pops, I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna get out of bed, depend on myself, get up at the same time every day. And for me that time, regardless of where I was, was beat that sun up. No matter where I am, I'm gonna beat that thing up. So it gives me a sense of control over my own life. Second thing, I had to start cleaning up my life and my friends and my environment. When I was younger, between 15 and 25, I was doing crazy stuff in my life. Wasting my weekends, I had the same. Weekends are for the week. I was drinking, fooling around, around with a bunch of bad things, bad people. At 25 years old, I cleaned it all up. Quit going to those places. Quit hanging out with people that did not have ethics and discipline in their life. I wanted to build something in my life. I wanted to become someone. And to do that, to become someone in the eyes of the world, just beating that sun up every morning gives me the sense of accomplishment. That I did what I said I was going to do. That I woke up when I said I would wake up. And I start building respect for myself. Start believing in myself so that I can go out into the world and maybe Maybe today when I go into this meeting that I'm dressed for, they'll believe in me as much as I believe in me, and that'll show up in a contract, a deal, maybe even some money.